The Netherlands is extremely vulnerable to flooding. So the Dutch constructed the longest dam in Europe. And it has never broken in the 85 years of its existence. This is the story of its construction. In the past, the Netherlands would flood regularly, with many early settlements built on higher ground. Between 800 and 1300, these floods were especially bad, caused by rising sea levels due to a warmer climate. These floods slowly connected these lakes with the North Sea. This new body of water was called the Zuiderzee, or the Southern Sea. Ships could now travel freely between the North Sea and the most inner part of what today we call the Netherlands. Including this little town called Amsterdam, becoming a major trading city, create the first stock exchange and develop the early forms of modern capitalism. All because of these floods. But the Southern Sea made the Netherlands more vulnerable to flooding. Over the centuries, the water from the Southern Sea would periodically sweep in and flood the surrounding areas, destroying crops, homes and families. Something had to be done. The Netherlands had to be protected. It is at this point that we have to look at a man named Cornelis Lely. Lely was born in 1854 and received an education in civil engineering at the Delft University of Technology. He began working as an engineer for the Ministry of Transport, Public Works and Water Management in the Netherlands, helping the ministry to implement some canal laws. Then he joined the Southern Sea Association, whose goal was to close off the Southern Sea using dikes. Over the course of five years, he proceeded to lay out a brilliant plan that would revolutionize dike building, permanently closing off the Southern Sea against any floods and pump dry large swaths of lands to be used for agriculture. What was revolutionary was not what he wanted to build, but how he planned to build such a large dike. Many before had tried, but they never figured out how to do it. But this idea wasn't cheap. In fact, his plan would cost as much as the entire Dutch government budget for a whole year. To put that into perspective, the Netherlands' government budget for 2018 is 285 billion euros. The Lely's plan therefore also had to include a way to make a lot of money. He wanted to pump large areas of land dry to mine clay and use the new fertile land for agriculture. We will talk more about this part of his plan in the next episode of this series. But spoiler alert, this made the Netherlands the second largest exporter of food in the world. Lely had his plan, now he needed the government to pay for it. Lely was a clever guy, not only in terms of engineering but also as a politician. A mere five years after joining the Ministry of Water Management, he had risen up to become THE Minister of Water Management. During this time, he tried to get Parliament to adopt his plan into law and built this new dike and polders. But unfortunately, the government was dissolved early. But then he got a second try being minister in 1897, and while he managed to build a large canal to divert river water from overflowing, he wasn't able to push his plan through parliament. After that, he was governor for Suriname for a few years, a Dutch colony at the time, and went about improving the railroad network there. But then, in 1913, he became minister a third time, and third time's the charm. This time, he finally managed to convince Parliament to look into making the Netherlands less vulnerable to flooding using his plan. And then two events happened that made Parliament realize that they needed to have this dam and these polders. First is World War I. While most of Europe at the time was embroiled in one of the bloodiest wars in history, the Netherlands remained neutral. Furthermore, all of its neighbors were at war. This meant that food was scarce as millions now had to be fed without producing food or products themselves. This increased the demand for food and in a world without artificial fertilizer, lots of farmland was necessary to keep one's own population well fed. And the Netherlands is a small country with a lot of people, so it desperately needed fertile land to keep its growing population fed. But the most compelling reason came in 1916. In the middle of the night, a large flood came crashing through into the Netherlands. The dikes broke. Thousands of homes were damaged and destroyed. Holes of over a hundred meters wide were clawed into the dikes by the rushing water. And several counties went bankrupt trying to repair this damage. Now everybody saw just how vulnerable the Netherlands was to flooding. In 1918, the law to construct the largest dam in European history was passed and construction began in 1920. 
The name of this dam would be the Afsluit Dijk, which translates to the Enclosure Dijk. But because it has water on both sides, it means it's not a dike, but a dam. So I will be referring to it as both a dam and a dike this whole episode, because it's kind of both. Work began carefully. Nobody had ever built anything in the water on such a scale before. So first, they built a smaller dike from the mainland to this small island over here. Here they gained some useful expertise for the real project. And in 1927, the work on the Afsluit Dijk began in four locations. They began on either side where the dike was supposed to be connected. They also built two islands in the middle of the Southern Sea where the dikes were supposed to cross and started construction on both these two locations as well. They built two islands in the middle of the sea to build a giant dike in the middle of the water. I think you can see why the Netherlands is famous for its water constructions. Tens of thousands of workers flocked from across the country to work on this marvel of engineering, including my grandfather. First, the Dutch had to build a sturdy foundation. Ships came day in day out, dropping millions of cubics of meters of materials into the sea. On the inland side, heavy stones were deposited. On the seaside, boulder clay was dropped into the sea. They were kept in place with brushwood mattresses, which in turn were held down by boulders and old concrete. Then till was collected from the sea bottom and deposited upon its foundation. Finally, the dike was finished by raising it above sea level with sand and clay. To make sure the dike was sturdy and wasn't blown away by the wind, grass was planted on top of it. And so the dike closed on May 28, 1932, two years earlier than expected. The Southern Sea was turned into a lake, the Meer or IJssel Lake, named after the river IJssel which deposited its water into this new lake. And this water needed to be deposited from the newly formed lake into the sea or else the lake would overflow. So at both sides of the dike sluices were constructed to let the water flow from the newly formed lake into the sea. And as salt water was deposited into the sea, the Iso lake slowly converted from a salt water lake into a freshwater lake. The dam was given a road connecting the northwest of the Netherlands with the west. And so on September 25th, 1933, the Afsluit dike was officially opened. An amount of 23 million cubic meters of sand and 13 and a half million cubic meters of till were deposited onto the seabed. Lely himself never saw his project finished. He died a few years earlier in 1929, but his projects would save tens of thousands of lives when the Afsluit Dijk was put to the test in 1953. One of the most severe storms hit the Netherlands. In the south, where dikes were far more simple, the water came crashing in. Over 1800 people were killed, 30,000 livestock died, and thousands of homes were destroyed. But in the north, behind the safety of the Afsluit Dijk, there was no damage. Nobody died, nobody's home was destroyed and no land was flooded. In that single night, the Afsluit Dijk paid for its investment, both in terms of money and in terms of the lives it saved. This area of the Netherlands was no longer vulnerable to flooding. And this is where we leave for today. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. I will make a follow-up video on the series, which will cover the polder projects mentioned earlier in this episode, where vast tracts of land were dug out from the sea. So press the subscribe button if you want to see that video, comment below with your thoughts on this video and which topics I should cover next, and if you like this video, please share it, it means a lot to me.